Hello and welcome to day three of the Heal Yourself, Heal Your Life Challenge. So I hope that you've been enjoying the activities. I purposefully made them really um, specific so that you could do them in a short period of time and you could take those very first steps to accomplishing those goals for each day of the challenge. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about day three. So in day three, it's all about discovering your one true ally on earth um, during your soul journey on earth here. So let's talk about who that one true ally is. Now, I want to go ahead and begin by talking about the fact that a lot of times one of the reasons why we have difficulty in our journey, especially when we're undergoing the spiritual awakening process and and we are having that difficulty. And I talked about some of that, why that happens in day one, because we start feeling that disconnection and the more we're disconnected from that soul essence and the more difficult it is for us and the more challenging life seems to become. Even when like everything seems to be okay like from the outside people would think that our life is fine but we still feel that something is off then that is one of the key things that we need to start with is making sure that we are establishing that connection with our soul essence now one another thing that makes it the journey seemed very difficult is the fact that we feel like we're doing it alone. And so why do we feel like we're doing it alone? Uh, part of it is because of that disconnection. Because of that disconnection, we feel lonely even when we're surrounded by a lot of people or we, we feel like there's, there's a lack in our lives because we have this disconnection. One thing that we don't realize is that we always have allies that we can turn to for assistance. And there's different types of allies that we can work with. And so today I want to talk about the one that is our one true ally here for our soul. And we always need to consider this as our ally and that's our body. And, and the reason why we need to start there with this particular ally is because even if we make other allies and we start working with other allies, if we still feel like our body is our enemy, then that is a huge disconnect because our body is the one that receives our soul and that carries our soul during this particular lifetime to have this particular experience. So it's through our bodies, through our emotions, through our thoughts that our soul essence is expressed. And so if we start thinking of our bodies as something that we need to control and something that's kind of an antagonist to our story, then we um, are going to find it very difficult to navigate life. And then as we sometimes what happens is that disconnection, that soul essence disconnection that we feel starts to have an effect on our physical body. And so we don't really pay attention to it because we're just educated out of pay, paying attention to our bodies. We're educated to push our bodies beyond the limit and not really listen to the messages that our body is telling us so and then of course this is the messages of our soul which is what we talked about on day one and day two and it's being expressed and it's being kind of filtered through the body that's how the body that's how the soul wants to communicate it the, the way that it can communicate is through the body now when we think about the body we think about the physical body but in fact, the body is more just than the physical body. We also have other energy bodies that we don't necessarily see. So these are the mental body. So, so for example, our thoughts, our emotional bodies, our emotions, and then of course the spirit body. So we think about the soul, we think about the spirit body, and then we think about the physical body. And so one thing that we wanna do is we wanna shift our perspective to not think of our bodies as an enemy or as an antagonist. We want to consider that our body 
is assisting us, like is uh, um, assisting us to have this particular experience. And if something is wrong, so if we're experiencing pain or disease in some form in our bodies, it's because it's been developing for a long time. And, and usually spiritual problems manifest in the body so we can deal with the physical symptom but we ultimately also need to deal with a cause of that symptom so that then whatever is happening in our physical body doesn't recur or doesn't pop up in in something else so um so i want to keep us small so i know that when i start talking about these issues because i'm so passionate about them i tend to go really big so i want to keep us small so the first thing is that we want to consider one we're not alone right we're not alone there's all these different types of allies that we can work with and that's one of the things that i do in my program is that i help you to connect with different types of allies but where you can start right now and the very first step is connecting with your body because most of the information that you're going to receive from your soul you're going to receive through your body and through one of your bodies whether it's your physical body or one of your energy bodies and so you may have noticed in uh, the questions that I gave you for Tuesday for day two was that the um, the questions targeted different energy bodies. So there were some questions that asked you about your feelings. There were some questions that asked you about your thoughts or your memories, right? And so what those questions were designed to do, they were designed to activate different parts of your body. Now, a lot of times when that those parts of our body get activated or those parts of that energy body gets activated, we start feeling it in our body. So we feel the tightness. So I talked about my client yesterday and I gave you an example during the live of uh, what she was what she shared with me when I took her through this particular exercise and she started talking about her how she was feeling tightness in her chest or she felt pressure in her chest and so that in fact is our body communicating with us and so it's and so that's where the um, that soul essence when when we're hearing that voice of our soul where our where our soul we have a connection through our soul through our physical bodies and so and through these other energetic bodies and so part of what we want to do is we need to start paying attention so the very but before we can do that we need to recognize that our body is our ally okay so that's the very first step is to recognize that our body is our ally. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that it's um, here to assist us, right? It's here to help us to develop. And it, and I'm not talking about um, the perspective that some people have, oh, well, you're here to learn this particular lesson or this pain is designed to, you know, is, is part of your soul um, journey and is designed to, teach you this lesson about life or about you or something like that that perspective may be true but that isn't necessarily helpful for helping us to connect with the um voice of our soul so you want to start thinking of well okay so everything that i all this information that's being processed through my body is a way that i can connect with my soul before we can do that though is we need to recognize that our body is our ally so our body is here to help us to help us um, with this particular experience and we feel pleasure through our body whenever we create um, and we bring something into manifestation we do that through our bodies or we experience that manifestation through our bodies so for example a lot of people tend to think of manifestation as just like external objects that come into your lives like you get a new car or you get a new house and that those are 
um, the types of manifestations and, and those are true. And we experience all of those through our body. So we experience the driving of the car and the pleasure of being in the car and seeing the car and, and the smell of the new car or the experience of driving in that car, of traveling in that car. All of that is experienced through our bodies. And so our bodies help us to take pleasure in our manifestations. And so, and that's the same when we create some things. So those of you that are crafty and like to create with your hands, if you, for example, if you sew or if you knit or if you paint, or if you cook, uh, or if you garden, right? So all of these things that we do through our body. So that means we're expressing that part of ourselves through our bodies and through the um, through the movement of our limbs, through our uh, through our eyes, through our nose, right? If it's if it's food and taste and so on. And then of course, when we are experiencing that that manifestation as a form of um, as a form of pleasure, right? We're really enjoying being in that particular experience. We also feel that pleasure in our body. So we feel the expansiveness in our chest. We feel the joy. We feel the, the bubbling of pleasure in our different energy centers. And so really thinking about that in terms of our body and that our body is our ally. And we want to treat it as our, our ally. So we want to shift those beliefs that we may have or that we may be seeing in all different messages from the outside, from our culture or our families um, that disconnect us from this ally, this ally that is here to assist us with our soul journey. So your uh, assignment for today was to uh, find that one belief about your body that that reflects or encourages this lack of connection and so um, and the reason why is because we want to acknowledge that we have that belief so that we can recognize it whenever it comes up because we want to shift it right we want to start transforming that belief so and we need to release it so that then we can start treating our bodies like an ally we can start thinking about how is my body assisting me like how is my body assisting me um, in this particular journey and so we are going to um, continue tomorrow with um, the uh, this particular aspect of well it, once we think of our bodies as allies, then how does our body allow this soul communication to come through? And so we'll talk much more about that tomorrow. And so what I want you to, to, to do today is answer the question, so what is this one belief? And so a lot of us have these very negative thoughts about our bodies. We constantly criticize our bodies. Um, so do you do you do that right do you uh treat your your body with a, a, some antagonism right and all of us do that in one way or another and some of us are much more crit self-critical and a lot of times that's because we've heard it from the outside right we've heard our parents criticize us or perhaps our partners criticize us or our parents or our body doesn't necessarily match all the messages that we're getting from the outside about what an ideal body should look like and so then what that does is we internalize that belief and we start uh, we start um, saying it to ourselves or thinking it about our own bodies. So first is identifying, well, that what is that one belief, right? And that one could be um, even saying, like, I really dislike my nose or I dislike my pointy ears or my big forehead or um, the way I smile, right? Or, or so it could be anything that relates to your body. And of course, if you have pain uh, or if you experience some sort of disease that you're having trouble um, healing, then one of the, um, then we start focusing on that, that, um, 
that experience, the, right, that experience of pain or disease or uh, lack of movement or whatever that disease is uh, causing. So consider, and I'm, I don't want to um, deny the fact that you're experiencing that, but how does that experience affect how we treat our bodies? And a lot of times when we start experiencing some diff, uh, some challenge that's physical, some physical challenge that we experience in our bodies, we start thinking like my body betrayed me, right? And so, and, and that's where that antagonist uh, feeling or the antagonist perspective then comes forward. And, and so when we, um, when we have an antagonist or we, when we have an enemy, someone that we don't like, we don't really pay attention to them, right? Anything that they tell us, we kind of discount it. And so if we have that relationship with our bodies, then that means that we're going to be discounting and we're going to be wanting to control. We're going to be wanting to, um, to kind of corral and, and limit in some way. And that's actually the wrong approach to really allowing the information of your soul to flow through. And so that's, that's a very first shift that we need to do. So it doesn't matter how much healing we go out and receive from, from the outside, from practitioners or doctors and so on. If we still have that antagonist relationship with our body, then there's, it, it's harder for us to receive that healing or it's harder for our body to receive that healing because there is that antagonism, right? So that's the very first step that we need to work with is, establish, is working on shifting that relationship that we have with our bodies. So the, so, the second, so the first question is, what is that one belief? And then how have you treated your body because of this particular belief? So maybe you, you, know, you think your tummy is too big and so you starve yourself, for example, right? Or you over-exercise, you over um, um, exert your body to the point of pain or to the point of uh, exhaustion, right? So what, what are some things that, that you do? Or maybe you uh, feel so discouraged by the way your body is that you just, you don't move your body at all, right? So that's, that's kind of going the opposite direction. So answer however this, particular, this applies to you related to this one belief. And then the last question is how can you change this belief to transform your relationship with your body, right? Because we want to start thinking of our bodies as an ally, right? So would you say that to your best friend, right? So if, you're, if you are mean to your best friend, if you're always criticizing your best friend, if you're always putting them down, if you're always pushing them towards pain, then they're not gonna be your best friends for very long, right? So think of that as your body is your ally. Like this is the ally that carries us for our entire lifetime. And so we want to treat our body as an ally. So even if you're experiencing difficulty, even if you're experiencing pain, uh, even if you're experiencing challenges that um, because of disease or lack of motion, or maybe there was a... Um, uh, an injury that you had in the past, you still want to come back. Okay. So if that was my, my best friend, right, what would I say to them? How would I treat them? Right. We probably would be a lot more compassionate with them than sometimes we are with ourselves. And so we want to start, um, using that same method. We want to have this compassion and really start thinking of our body, loving our bodies and, and treating our bodies like an ally to our soul. Because our, our body, our soul is connected and expressed through our bodies. And so that's really important for us to always consider and always have in mind, even if we're experiencing some sort of difficulty and, um, and pain. Because it's hard to feel compassion and feel the pain at the same time. But the more you connect with the body, then the easier it is to deal with the challenges that you may be experiencing. So um, we're going to continue tomorrow with the next part. So uh, what is, so once we establish, okay, this is the ally, 
then how does that help us on our journey? And remember that part of what I'm doing here is I'm giving you the very first steps of the, um, of the healing roadmap. And what I'm going to do on Friday is I'm going to put all of these steps together so you can see how they work together to um, help you to heal. And so what the roadmap does is it uh, reveals like all of these different components that you need, you want to have in place so that your healing can be more effective so that you can have more long term results. And of course, not just for yourself, but also for everyone that you love, because once you heal, you know that that affects your loved ones, your children, your, your, um, your spouse, your partners, your parents, right? So really, when we heal, that ripples out in a lot of different levels. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we're going to talk about that last piece of um, what do we do once, okay, once we have our ally, then how do we start working with this particular ally and how does it, um, how does it communicate with us? So what are the things that we can do to start hearing our souls, right, to work, working with our soul essence through our bodies. So thank you for being here today. I look forward to reading your shares of what you um, what you find today. And I know that this may be a little difficult to um, acknowledge like the beliefs that we have around our bodies. And if you want to share them privately, feel free to um, send me an email or send me a DM. I read all of those. Um, and so I appreciate your shares, especially because I know that they're heartfelt and, um, and sometimes they're a little difficult to admit to ourselves, but those are like, it's the first step. Like, yes, it's difficult and it's the very first step that we need to take in order to really achieve the type of healing that we are looking for. So thank you for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow.